Kenya commits itself to fully enforce gender-based violence laws and policies by adopting a gender-based violence indicator in the government performance contracting framework to track duty bearers' accountability on enforcement and implementation of GBV laws and policies by 2022. Kenya also agrees to ratify and implement the ILO Convention 190 on eliminating gender-based violence and harassment in the world of work by 2026. We will also invest $23 million for uh, gender-based violence prevention and response by 2022 and increase the resource allocation of this to $50 million of own funding by 2026. We will invest a million dollars every year for gender-based violence research and innovation to boost evidence-based programming by 2026, as well as establish a gender-based violence survivors fund through co-financing model in partnership with private sector, civil society, and other stakeholders for the economic empowerment of all GBV survivors. We will introduce a module on GBV in the 2022 Kenya Demographic Health Survey to strengthen the utilization of gender statistics and in informing the design and scale up as well as evaluation of FGM and gender-based violence programming. As well, we will commit to developing a uh, gender-based violence management and information system to strengthen gender-based violence prevention and response programming. We will also integrate gender-based violence services, including medical, legal, psychological support services into our essential minimum package of universal health coverage this year. We will scale up the National Police Service integrated response to gender-based violence, as well as commit to gender-based violence prevention and response in crisis situations such as we are in with COVID-19, and ensure that all humanitarian response includes gender-based violence. We will strengthen our collaboration with all non-state actors, including girl-led women rights organizations, male champions, and private sector through coordination structures, such as the Gender Sector Working Group at the national and our local county levels, as well as adopt institu institutionalization of the multi-sectoral GEF leadership structure throughout all our leadership structures in our country. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to conclude by saying that we will continue to work with all world leaders to ensure an end to a practice that has harmed millions of girls across the world and to ensure that these practices cease and all our women and girls are protected so that they can assume their full role in the development of our social economic agenda for Kenya, for Africa, and the globe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenyatta. I thank you for your ambitious commitment. Thank you very much. Et maintenant, nous allons passer la parole à Madame Sal. Gender-based violence is a widespread and persistent global issue. And if we consider the statistics, for example, across the world, 36% of women aged between 15 to 49 have been subjected to some form of violence at least once in their lifetime, most often from somebody who is very close to them. An estimated 18% of women have also experienced physical and psychological violence at the hands of a partner or someone close to them in the past year alone. We can say that we have achieved quite a bit over the years, but I still believe we still have a very much long way to go. As we speak today, over four million girls 
undergo female genital mutilation across the world. And globally, more than 100, 200 women actually, alive today have undergone female genital mutilation. More than 33,000 girls are married off every day, well before the age of 18. And indeed, some of the latest data that we have from UN Women, violence against women in East and Southern African region reveals that domestic violence is the most socially tolerated form of violence against women. Data from five countries show that over 50% of respondents indicate that violence against women is acceptable under certain circumstances. The COVID-19 pandemic has exasperated the situation and turned gender-based violence into a global emergency. Emerging data also indicates a surge of at least 25% in violence against women across the globe. In the past year alone, Cameroon has reported a 35% increase in cases, Central Africa a spike of 69%, South Africa a spike of 37%, and my own country, Kenya, a recent survey has shown that cases of gender-based violence had increased by more than 50% from the previous year. These are undoubtedly alarming statistics, which I believe call for urgent and very bold and corrective measures. We in Kenya have made significant progress to addressing gender-based violence, and I personally have made a personal commitment to end female genital mutilation by the end of my tenure next year. as well as an end to all forms of gender-based violence by 2030, as envisioned by the Sustainable Development Goals. So ladies and gentlemen, against this background, allow me now to share with you Kenya's GEF headline commitments on gender-based violence to accelerate the pace and deliver concrete results by 2026 and beyond and towards that end of our social economic agenda for Kenya, for Africa, and the globe. Thank you very much. I thank you for your ambitious... Merci. Et je vais maintenant accueillir avec beaucoup de joie, beaucoup d'honneur, deux prix Nobel de la paix, deux personnes qui sont farouches combattants et combattantes des violences faites aux femmes. J'appelle Madame Nadia Mourad et Monsieur le Docteur Denis Mukwege.